The Model Shop Live Scale Modeling Show is brought to you by Tenet Controls, makers of lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. And by... HDA Model Works, suppliers of scale model lighting products, detail parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelWorks.com today. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to The Model Shop, the live scale modeling show. I'm your host, Boyd Crompton. Thanks for joining us tonight. I apologize for the little bit of a delay in getting started here tonight. We just had a uh, pretty pretty strong thunderstorm roll through just a few minutes before the show was going to start, so uh, we had to ride that one out here. But we're going to crank it up, and hopefully uh, we won't get interrupted by a power outage or something here on the way uh, during the broadcast tonight, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, we've got a great little show in store for you guys tonight. We're going to uh, start off with our usual kicking things off with heading over to our model shop Google community page and um, Having a look at what's been going on there a lot of people have been updating on the page with the uh, Projects that they're working on so we'll check uh, some of that work out over there and and uh, Recognize some of the people that are contributing over on the page there and then we're going to take you on the bench for a little bit of work tonight I'm working on this little uh, kit here. This is the uh, Doomsday Machine from the classic Star, Star Trek episode. This is a resin kit that was uh, uh, produced quite a few years ago. Unfortunately, it, uh, when I checked on the website recently, it, it looks like it's kind of out of production right now, but hopefully they'll bring it back. I, I picked this up, uh, I don't know, maybe about four or five years ago over at uh, the JT Graphics website, and it doesn't seem to be listed there anymore. And when I got the box, there wasn't any uh, name of who actually makes the kit. So... Uh, maybe if you guys are interested in finding one, you can search on Google or something like that. And uh, maybe somebody out there's got these. Uh, I did a review on this with you guys here on the show, I think maybe about a year ago. And uh, But I've had the kit for several years and just decided to finally put it together. We're doing some lighting and stuff on it. And we're going to uh, put some of the finishing touches on it on here uh, on the bench with you guys tonight. I got a nice little package from our good friend Jerry at HDA Model Works that I'm going to show you guys tonight. This is the... Um, uh, kit that will be offered by Jerry for the 1350 scale Enterprise refit. Uh, we did a review of the early production parts uh, a few episodes back for you guys, but these are the final production parts. And uh, after our show airs tonight, Jerry told me to tell everybody that's interested in getting a set of these that they will appear on his uh, website this week and be ready to be uh, ready for ordering. So we're going to have a look at these parts. Uh, these are really nice, high quality parts. They're all 3D printed and uh, they're done in clear so you can do some lighting. Uh, Jerry's also telling me that there's also going to be a supplemental uh, 
photo etch set that goes with these parts that he'll have uh, uh, fairly shortly uh, from Green Strawberry for some detail parts on these, uh, mostly on the bridge and the BC deck around the airlock doors and some other little things like that. That's not quite available yet, but it will be coming very soon. So uh, I don't know if Jerry's going to have these parts available separately or if you're going to be if you're going to order these, you, you know, you're going to get it all in one kit, but you get the uh, lower uh, planetary sensor dome, you get a much more accurate impulse engine deck, you get a reworked bridge and BC deck that's um, got the, uh, uh, the bridge has been modified already so that it's uh, suitable for lighting and it's, uh, you know, made a little bit higher so you can get like a lighthouse LED in the front to get your flood, uh, your floodlight effect. So you don't have to rework the bridge that comes with the kit anymore. And then you get replacement mag grills, the little grills that go on the front ends of the, uh, on, on each side of uh, both nacelles in the front that are more accurate than what's on the kit. So but we'll pop these out of the bag in just a minute and uh, put them on the bench and show them to you guys. So hats off to Jerry for uh, uh, working on these. He's been working on these for pretty close to a year. And uh, they're much more accurate and a lot nicer for your uh, 350 scale Enterprise models. So if you're building one now, you might want to check these out. Uh, so let's, without further ado, let's head over to our uh, model shop community page um, and see what's going on over there. Um, we've got uh, several people working on projects. Before I get going into this too far, I want to mention again that we are going to be kicking off our uh, model shop community uh, Google group group build uh, that's going to take place uh, the third week of August the third weekend in August I'm not exactly sure um, what the date of that is but it'll be the Friday it'll start at uh, Friday night at midnight and finish up on um, the Sunday of that weekend at midnight so it's the third weekend of August I'll put the actual date up on this page right here I'll, I'll uh, I'll uh, stick it at the very top so you guys can go there and, and see it. And uh, I'll also post it over on our Facebook uh, community that we have there as well. And um, I want to say a big welcome to all the new people that have joined the Facebook community as, as well. we got a lot of activity going on over there too. So uh, thanks for uh, taking part of that, everybody. So um, let's see what we got going on, everybody. We've got... Uh, okay, Mark Shu here is building an R2-D2. I'm not sure which kit this is. Um, but let's have a look at some pictures here. I'm not sure if this is the Bondi kit or which kit this is. And you can see he's working on the um, initial dome. This might even be the D'Agostini kit uh, that's out there that you get, you know, through the subscription magazine. It's very possible that that's what it is, but uh, we'll be definitely looking forward to following along with that one. It's a really nice looking build. We have uh, James Schulenberg that's working on his 1500 scale battleship, space battleship Yamato. One of the Bondi kits. Good looking build going on there. Looks like you get a separate part down here that has some of the interior detail. Not sure if he's going to be doing any lighting on that one or not, but um, really nice little kit. Here we have Sean Dalkey doing the uh, the new Death Dealer kit. This is a really nice kit. Uh, I've seen some builds of this out there in the different communities that they've done a wonderful job on these with the you know all the potential you have here for all the paint detail and shading on the horse and everything. So maybe we can see a little bit. Well, the picture actually gets smaller when you click on it, but that's a really beautiful kit. We have TJ Blackwell here working on an F-117 Stealth Nighthawk. See a few pictures of this. Still really like the design of that airplane. Ah, here we have uh, a good picture of the... Uh, Newly released kit from, uh, or upcoming release from Mobius Models. Mobius Models is um, acquired the Star Trek license for the Kelvin Universe, J.J. Uh, Abrams version of the Star Trek ships. 
And this is the USS Franklin that we saw in Star Trek Beyond in 1350 scale. And again, it's an early release. I'm sure that there'll probably be some clear parts and it's just a, you know, basically a mock-up. Oh, that's not the... I think this is their steel... Uh, they're going to be releasing a metal version of the uh, Flying Saucer as well, just like they did a long time ago. They actually had a metal version of the uh, Jupiter II in large scale. But uh, getting back to the Franklin here, this kit's uh, in pre-production right now. Uh, I haven't heard any word as far as when it's actually going to be released, but uh, this kit and the uh, the Discovery 1 from uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey are two of the really exciting releases coming up from... Uh, uh, Mobius models, so you can look forward to that one in the near future. So we'll pop back over here and see what else is going on. Here you can see some of the detail on it. it looks to be really cool. We have one of our members, uh, Bruce, who goes by the name Baba here on our community, is uh, down at uh, the Oshkosh Air Show that they're holding this week in Wisconsin, or I think it might be over now, but... Uh, for the very first time in something like 40 years, they had two flying B-29s together. Uh, Fifi, who has been around for years, <clears throat> and the recently restored Doc, which is uh, just absolutely beautiful. It's, it's awesome to see uh, these two planes flying together. There's already been some videos uploaded on YouTube with some really good high-definition footage of these planes flying. So uh, part of history being brought back there and... It's not actually modeling, but we've all probably built models of this airplane, and it's just really, really cool to see uh, these planes flying again, and it takes a lot of work to keep them flying. Here we have uh, Jeff Black that um, has just uh, finished working on the uh, When Worlds Collide rocket. That's one of my favorite old sci-fi movies. Let's uh, have a look at this. Beautiful job on the lighting and the uh, paintwork on the landscape and even the little logo here very nice job on that that's a kit that I've been meaning to pick up myself it's a fairly un inexpensive kit too a classic sci-fi movie I'm not exactly sure what this is let me see if we can go back to the description here and see what Jeff's talking about on that one that's called the nut rocker and figures I have no idea what that is, but it looks pretty pretty cool and pretty detailed. We have uh, Alan Blind, who's been uh, continuing to work on his Starsky and Hutch Torino. He had a little bit of problem with the paint, but uh, he did a wonderful job um, recovering from some paint issues on the model where he basically lost these stripes and a few other things, and um, he's gone back now and... Uh, reworked everything and it just shows you that uh, when you're when you're working with the hobby of modeling you, you just you never want to give up just if, if something happens just work your way through it and uh, you know you have these very helpful forums out here where you can ask people for advice if something goes wrong and there's always a lot of people willing to help you out and uh, you know don't let the model get the best of you just maybe put it aside for a little while if you get frustrated and and come back to it that's what that's what the hobby is all about and uh, it can be a little stressful at times, but when you work your way through it and achieve the, you know, solve the problem and achieve the results you wanted, it's uh, well worth it in the end. Dennis Statler showing here, he picked up a couple of kits. Looks like the C-3PO and R2-D2 kits. Here we have uh, Scott Hatchard, Aussie Truckee, just um, has some pictures he posted of his uh, Battleship Missouri build he's been working on. And if you look here, uh, he's got the uh, Enterprise aircraft carrier there as well. Lots of uh, detail work and photo etch work is going into these. He's got some ongoing uh, uh, video build series on his channel. His YouTube channel is called Aussie Trekkie. You can go there and check it out and watch all the work that he does on these models. And he takes you through a lot of uh, tips and tricks and techniques that he's using to put them together that will help you out if you're new to working with photo etch parts and things like that. So beautiful job on the ships there, Scott. We have uh, looks like some type of uh, Todd Millett's working on some kind of German armor there. 
Another picture of the Franklin. We've got Omar beginning some work on the Thanos. Again, I'm not uh, sure what that's from. It might be from some of the Marvel Universe or DC Comic Universe. Um, but he's doing a great job on the paintwork that you could see there. Got John Smith who posted a video of his recently finished Klingon Bird of Prey. Greg Bryan has uh, picked up a kit for our upcoming uh, group build. He's considering building the Batman, uh, Batwing here or the Batman Begins Batmobile because like we talked about, we're doing a, a police and fire and rescue theme. But Batman will actually qualify because Batman works with the police, I guess, and in the original comic books he was called he was you know it was in detective comics so um batman definitely qualifies james kirk's working on a mckee raider let's have a look at this doing some lighting on it looking really good Really interesting design on that ship. You can see he's doing the usual thing when you're working with lighted models. You're, you know, getting every everything sealed up and all your light leaks blocked and everything when you seal it all together. Using a combination of putty and paint and things like that. Looks like it's coming out real nice. Chris Farrell's working on a Huey helicopter kit. Kenneth Zimmerman with the old AMT Death Star kit, which he says he's going to be doing a lot of rework to it to get it to look more accurate. And Ted Pelzini with a 1-1000 scale Reliant build. Let's have a look at this. Looking real good. Did a lot of lighting on it. Nicely done at 1-1000 scale. Made his own base there. Let's see, Greg Bryan with the uh, Mercury Redstone. Have a look at that. Wow, really, really nice job. That one is from uh, Horizon Models. Not exactly sure what scale that is. Oh, 1 23rd scale, I believe is what it says. So it's pretty good sized. No, 1 72nd scale. Yeah, 1 23rd would be a lot bigger than that. But very nice, very nicely done. I've got that uh, Mercury Redstone capsule kit that we picked up a while back from Atomic City, and I'm going to be actually starting to work on that pretty soon. I'm looking forward to that kit. I see several of you guys out there also picked that one up. Very nice kit. And for us Star Trek fans, a little bit of uh, movie news. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan has been remastered in 4K resolution and is going to be released uh, in the theater again on... Uh, September 10th and 13th, so you can look forward to that. Um, it's Apparently it's the director's cut version of the film, so I don't know about you guys, but if I happen to get a chance, I'm going to definitely go and see that in the theater again. It should look absolutely gorgeous in 4K resolution, so they've been, uh, they're also going to be re-releasing Close Encounters of the Third Kind and some other classic sci-fi films. We have John Hunt here that's uh, doing a wonderful job on a Enterprise refit by creating his own Aztec uh, decals for the you know Aztec panel decals, which look really really great. Great job on that. He created those himself. Here we have Omar with his recently completed. I think this is this yeah 68 Dodge Charger he built as the race car Hemified. Did an awesome job on that. He mentioned that he had a little trouble um, getting the front suspension parts to fit right, but he worked his way through it and got it all straightened out, and it came out fantastic. Great job on that, Omar. Great-looking charger. 
and then we have PJC 2.0 who's or 2.0 who's working on the AMT USS Defiant kit looks like he's going to be doing lighting on that kit and George Bramble's continuing on with his work on his uh, 1350 scale Enterprise refit with his masks TJ Blackwell building a 1700 scale battleship Bismarck and Bill Bauer is doing the uh, Boba Fett Slave 1. Doing some lighting and everything on it. Let's see, Armando just repl uh, completed the another figure. It's the Girl of Steel. Great job as usual, Armando. He just cranks those things out. Let's see, we got something that popped up new here. This is a model of some kind of a, a fair ride, the break dance, faller break dance that Frankie goes to Hobbywood's working on. And roll back down here. Okay, looks like um, Shannon Freeman's just picked up the old classic AMT Galileo 2 shuttlecraft kit he's going to be working on. Just for those that are interested, there's a company called, uh, I think it's called Lucas Conversions that makes a little conversion kit uh, made out of resin for this particular kit that uh, makes the rear part of the shuttle a little bit more accurate uh, that you can find that's still available. I think they cost the the conversion kit costs around $20. You should still be able to find it on uh, eBay or Amazon or maybe on some of the forums. Speaking of the shuttlecraft, this is a little diorama that our good friend Chris Cortell did a while back uh, with a really, really uh, clever little twist to this. Uh, he created the uh, Mirror Universe version, the ISS Galileo. And you can see he's got the evil crew here rounding up some of the innocent villagers and uh, just a really clever idea for a diorama. You can see that video over on Chris's YouTube channel, Classic Plastic 101, if you're interested in checking that out. Chris takes you through the entire build and shows you how he did it and where he got everything to put it all together. So, really cool. Uh, this was one of my favorites that I saw this last week. Um, Dan Harris did a wonderful job on this uh, original... Colonial Viper from the original Battlestar Galactica TV series. Just absolutely gorgeous. The uh, weathering is beautiful. The uh, coloring on the panels, everything turned out really, really nice on this. And uh, he's got it lighted as well. Mounted on a swivel base. You can see the cockpit all lit up. Good old Captain Apollo at the, at the controls there. Beautiful job on the lighted engines. Very nice work. Thanks for sharing that one with us, Dan. Another one of Omar's builds. This is the uh, Chi-Town Hustler. Uh, famous funny car from back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Lots of detail on this beautiful kit. Beautiful work, beautiful paint job. As you can see, like usual, we've got a lot of uh, active modelers here in the community. That's always a good thing. And, uh, Hopefully it's inspired inspired a lot of other people to start projects of their own. And here I think we're getting back into some of uh, some stuff that we showed you in our last uh, episode. 
pictures of the upcoming Bondi Master Grade or Perfect Grade Millennium Falcon kit, which looks to be really, really nice. Here's Tag's recent update on his Batgirl, which you can see he added the glitter paintwork on it, which really brought that model to life. Just looks beautiful. The Phantom of the Opera by Paul Rees from the, uh, looks like it's built off of the uh, Geometrics kit. Paul is really, really good at doing figure painting. You can see all the uh, beautiful shading and everything. Real, realistic looking teeth and eyes. Definitely wouldn't want to run into this guy in a dark alley. <laughs> okay. Lee Chambers finished up his uh, Rambo converted Puma movie helicopter build with motorized rotor. That's actually his real model there. You can check out the video by clicking on that link. And James Kirk with an A-10 Thunderbolt. Lots of people picking up the new Ravel 12700 scale Star Destroyer kit that's the same kit as the Zvezda kit. So, I think we're pretty well caught up on the page, guys, and I'll remind everybody that we have uh, a sister page over on the Facebook community, named the same name, the Model Shop community. So you might want to hop by over there and check out what's going on and Feel free to join in, even if you're already a member over here. There's a lot of different stuff going on over there. We get uh, several new members joining every day, so it's growing really fast. And uh, wish hop over there and wish those guys a warm welcome. We're going to take a quick break, everybody, and uh, come back, and we'll be on the bench, and we're going to start... Uh, I think we'll kick things off showing the little parts from uh, the, um, the new kit that Jerry has out for the Enterprise Refit. And then we'll, um, let me get back on my camera here. We'll come back with the, uh, looking at our parts, and then we'll head over to the bench and start doing a little work on the uh, Doomsday Machine. And I'll be back with that in just a couple seconds. Everybody stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we're back again with you, and we're going to take a look at the uh, new parts from Jared HDA Model Works for the 1350 scale Enterprise refit. 
Uh, these are some really beautiful photo or uh, uh, 3D printed parts. And as I said, they're going to be uh, released here this week on Jerry's website. That's hdamodelworks.com. You can hop by over there and go to the Star Trek section. And you'll see those listed there. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if Jerry's going to offer these individually or if you're going to just have to buy this, enti this entire set. But Jerry told me they were going to be uh, very reasonably priced. And uh, if you guys out there are you know, building an Enterprise refit, you'll definitely want to get this set. There are a lot more accurate parts than what came with the kit. And so uh, let's have a look at them here. First we have the uh, bridge, which you can see it, it's when, the, when you get the parts, they're still going to be attached to these little kind of bases that come with the... Uh, you know, that you get from 3D printing, so you just have to trim everything off here and do a little bit of light scuffing with your sandpaper and then prime them and everything and uh, get them ready for paint. But uh, So it's going to be kind of hard to see the detail here, but uh, I've had a look at these. Uh, the prototypes that I showed a little earlier that I had from Jerry, I, I sprayed some primer on them, and uh, they looked really, really good. They're nice and clean. Uh, you know, you, you see these tiny little lines that you get from 3D printing, but that disappears once you put primer on there and do a little bit of sanding. But uh, just use some really fine grit sandpaper and you won't lose any of the detail or anything. But these are all set up for lighting. So up here at the front, you can put a lighthouse LED in here and get your forward floodlight effect. And then your regular lights off the sides. Back here at the rear, there's going to be photo etch parts for the, uh, the uh, airlock and the little window details here on the back. So that's really nice. Here you have the... Um, uh, planetary sensor and if you pay attention to this this part is much more accurate it has the correct slope here in the front where it's you know it's more tapered instead of being chopped off flat it's much lower profile uh, it's very nice and again this is set up here so that there's these little slots um, basic you know basically right at the edge here that you can see where you you can do the same thing you can put some lighthouse LEDs right in here or some SMDs whatever your choice is and you'll be able to uh, light these little window ports really easy these pieces are molded into this part and the details already there so a little bit of masking tape right there when you paint everything else and then you're good to go whereas the old part had separate lenses that came with the kit that you had to put in there and fumble around with and worry about light leaks around the edges and all that so this is a much improved part and you can see how much lower profile it is and everything the shape of the dome the grid work, the kind of concentric rings are, are much more accurate. So you'll really improve the look of your Enterprise refit if you use these parts. And then uh, here we have the impulse deck, which has been slightly reshaped a little bit to be more accurate. And Jerry says that there will be some, in the photo etch set, there will be some grills for this that are screen accurate. Very nice. As you can see, being molded out of this kind of semi-transparent resin, your your uh, diffusion is already done for here, done for you here at the lenses, so you won't have to worry about that. Just uh, you know, put your put your orange or your red LEDs in behind that, and you, once you put your screens on there, and then mask all that off and paint it, it'll look perfect. So that's really nice. And here we have the mag grills. It's just going to be hard to see the detail on these, but they're really nice and crisp, nice clean lines. These are a lot more accurate than the ones that come on the kit. So basically what you do is you shave the ones off that are on your kit, which is kind of nice because if you've ever built the refit, that's kind of a difficult area to paint on the model the way it is with this being there. And there's there's a little blue area surrounding it, and these are supposed to be sort of a magnesium color, copperish magnesium color. And uh, so trying to paint this separately well, that, you know, with that other area right next to it was really difficult. So now you can shave that other stuff down, paint your area all blue, get it all nice and clean, paint these separately, and then put them down on top, and you'll have a really nice, clean, finished job there. So there you go, folks. That's the, um, that's the new parts from Jerry. There's going to be more parts coming from some, for some other kits, from what I'm told, and we'll announce them here for you on the show when, they, when Jerry gives me the go-ahead, and uh, we'll get probably get uh, examples of the parts here to show you and then shortly after that he'll have them on his website available he's been working hard on a lot of new things so um, he just wanted me to tell everybody out there that he really appreciate everybody supporting uh, his little company there and he's uh, doing very well and uh, a lot of people have been uh, finding Jerry to be very helpful as far as when they're trying to figure out lighting and things and they're new to it 
uh, they can go over to Jerry's site and when they're you know looking to order things for their kits and they haven't worked with it before Jerry's always very helpful about uh, making sure you get the right stuff and not selling you stuff you don't need and everything like that so it's nice to have somebody like that in the community he's just like our good friend Ralph Tanagli at Tenet Controls out there who always helps people out okay guys uh, I'll take one more quick break here and I'll get out all my tools and everything I need and we're gonna do a little bit of work on the um, doomsday machine here tonight uh, and I'm gonna go over and show you a little bit of what I've already done to it so far to get to this point so be right back with that guys Okay, everybody, well, we're back with you again, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of work on our little doomsday machine kit. Uh, again, apologies for uh, uh, not being able to tell you the name of who makes this, guys. As I said, it just came in a generic white box. All I can remember is that I bought it over at JT Graphics, their website, and unfortunately it's not listed there anymore. But uh, maybe even during the show's broadcast or maybe sometime this week somebody will get time and they can do a search on Google or something and see if uh, they could find the kit because already a few people have asked me about where I got it from and everything um, but it's a really nice little kit it's a little resin kit the entire model is about uh, nine inches long so it's not super huge but it is really accurate to the original classic doomsday machine um, so you do get this little base with it it's shaped like a planet so I decided to you know kind of paint it that classic uh, orange uh, color that we saw in a lot of the episodes I kind of simulated a few continents on there and you know a little bit of cloud cover and some ice and stuff like that uh, the way I painted that basically was I just took uh, and sprayed the entire thing orange and then I took uh, a paper towel and I uh, I'll get this a little closer this camera is not going to be too hot but it'll show up better I'm going to actually shoot some footage and put it on my regular YouTube channel but uh, I just took a paper towel and kind of tamped around it here in a few spots and it the effect worked out pretty good um, assembly of the of the model itself it comes in three segments and so putting it together is really straightforward it's resin you glue it together with CA glue it went together with you know like like a charm um, I had to do a little bit of sanding around the edges to round off these edges just a little bit because they were kind of flat uh, but I took and drilled out the center of it I drilled a hole up through the bottom first then I drilled a bigger hole this way into the front of it so I could run wire through there because I knew I was going to want to light this and uh, that was pretty easy to do as well. I used a 3 8 uh, 3 8 hole in here and a uh, 15 64 hole down here at the bottom uh, because it, I had some uh, of this brass mounting rod, which I'm going to wind up finish 
I'm going to finish this up by painting this rod black when I get all done. But um, this whole thing is going to sit on top of another uh, base because I'm going to build the 1 1,000th scale uh, Toss Enterprise kit as the Constellation and have that in the foreground, you know, all, all beat up and everything. And it's going to be kind of a forced perspective kind of a diorama where, you know, obviously they're not, not in the same scale. Uh, but you'll be kind of thinking of it as the, the constellation is kind of up toward, closer towards you and the, you know, the doomsday machine is in the background. Now I'm going to show you the lighting that's in this. Um, what I did is I used a combination of uh, uh, flickering LEDs and some multicolor changing SMDs. And I just, uh, to mount everything in it, I just took a piece of uh, clear... Uh, sprue you know a little piece of sprue that i had left over for some clear parts and i just glued it across so you couldn't see it you know had it sitting f uh, fairly far back in there and then i just uh attached all the leds to that you know kind of hung them on it and glued them all in place and got them aimed the way i wanted them and then uh, what i originally was trying to do is i was trying to make a lens to put in the front of this out of clear uh sheet styrene but it turned out that this hole is not exactly round. It's it's very uneven and irregular, and I didn't want any, I didn't want to have any gaps around the edges. So I wound up pouring clear resin into this, and just since the LEDs and everything are you know basically waterproof anyway, I knew it wouldn't hurt them. So I just basically filled the entire thing up with uh, clear resin, and uh, until I was about maybe a little over a quarter of an inch or so away from the top, you know, from the edge. And then just before it was completely dry, I just kind of went around with a, a tool and just kind of roughed it up a little bit so it would, you know, it would kind of rough it up and make it not look so smooth and, and um, help diffuse the light a little bit. And that's what I came up with. Now, what I'm going to cap this off with is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print, I'm going to take a screenshot of the, uh, the actual mouth of the Doomsday Machine when it's coming straight towards you from the original series. And then I'm going to create a decal out of that, perhaps two decals, because sometimes when you put light through decals, it washes them out. So I may create two decals and lay one over the top of the other so they get a little thicker. And then I'm going to put that decal over the top of all this and blend it all in. So the lighting effects flashing behind it are going to, you know, hopefully make it look the way I want or, you know, pretty close uh, approximation of what we saw in the uh, original you know special effects that were in there but it's 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 worked out really good so far i'm running it at nine volts now the paint job on the doomsday machine um is several layers of paint i started off with a basic layer of silver like the the bright uh chrome silver that i used on the uh the dupla color stuff that i used on the b29 bomber i i built a while ago that really really shiny stuff that looks almost like chrome and then I just uh, started spraying over it with uh, Tamiya Transparent Blue and got, you know, kind of the, the base coat of the overall blue. And then I went around with some darker blue and just hand brushed little globs on it here and there. And then I took another really small brush and I just went around and dragged it over top of the little, you know, ruffled areas on it like a dry brushing technique. And, and to bring out the, uh, you know, I'm not sure how good this, it shows up better on my... Uh, on my other camera but it, it it's a really close approximation to that weird modeled paint job that they had on the uh, original prop um, and then I decided I wanted it glossy because I wanted it to look like it was made out of some kind of metal you know and uh, plus the gloss brought out a lot of the detail and everything I, I did the inside of this same thing here with silver so if you look really close you can see some reflection going on there and I did transparent orange over the top of that to me a transparent orange and I think like from this angle right here it looks really really good but it's a really cool little kit uh, so that part of it is uh, pretty much done and I'll on my YouTube channel I'm gonna come back when I get my decal done and everything I'm gonna come back and show you how that turned out but we've got one little cool little thing extra that came with this kit and it is an in scale enterprise uh, and it's super, super tiny. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, you got to actually build it. It's it's a bunch of little separate resin pieces. Now, originally, I was gonna have it getting sucked into the maw of the of the uh, the doomsday machine here, but then I thought, well, if I do that, I'm gonna have to have a piece of clear 
I was thinking about maybe mounting it on a piece of uh, fiber optic or something, you know. And I thought, well, well, then I'd start thinking, well, wait a minute. What about the scene when the, um, when the Enterprise was flying over the, uh, the Doomsday Machine and it was, you know, when Decker was shooting at it while Kirk was on the uh, Constellation. So here's what I came up with. Let me get this. I'm going to have to put on my magnifying goggles here, guys, so I can see this. But I'm going to show you what we came up with here. Get this. I got a little tiny hole drilled in the top of it. And I can get the angle of it just right here. What I came up with was we now have the Enterprise flying over and firing phasers at it. And those are just long pieces of wire that I painted bright red. And um, I wanted to have the effect of the uh, the phaser strike sort of bouncing off of it like it did. So I've just took some really tiny pieces of wire and I'm and I'm gluing them on the tip here and like in a kind of a splash pattern. Um, so they're kind of 3D above. You know, this camera is not the most sharp focused. You'll see this much better when I actually put this on my regular channel. Um, but it's going to look really cool. And now we solve the problem of how to mount the Enterprise without, um, you know, having a piece of something you're going to be able to see there. We, we're using the phaser beams for that effect. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to finish this up. I've got to do the other side. I've got, I've got one phaser strike done there. You can barely see those spokes sticking out, but they're, you know, they're there. So I'm going to take some small wire now, and we're just going to cut that out, and we're going to glue those on to the other tip there, and then we're going to uh, paint that really quick, and then that'll wrap it up for our uh, our little Enterprise attacking the Doomsday Machine. So let's get to work on that. I'm just using some of Jerry's wrapping wire. It's 30 gauge, and it's solid core, so it's got a you know one strand of really thin wire in the middle of it. So I'm just going to strip it, pull the... Uh, the insulation off of it. Just kind of roughly uh, straighten it out with my hand here a little bit, and then I'm just going to cut some small little segments and lay them on our little piece of paper here. About the length that I want them to be at. Make them all kind of like, you know, a little bit different, little different lengths. About maybe five or six of them. That should be plenty. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of CA glue and make a little puddle here. And I'm going to have to get my tweezers. And we're just going to glue these on. Hard to grab a hold of them. I gotta push them onto the towel first, and then okay, just we're just we're just dipping one end in the in the glue there. And just giving them a second to hang on. And we'll hit them really quick with some uh, zip kicker here in a second. Pretty good. Oh, lost that one. There it is. These are really, really tiny. <laughs>
just kind of uh, positioning them the way I want it. Difficult little guys to hold on to. Let's go over. This side. Just got to fiddle around with a little bit to get in position where you want them to be. short one over here. pretty good. Now we just hit it with a little bit of zip kicker. That will help it settle up, settle down for us real good. Okay, I've got my uh, airbrush already loaded with this color here. We're going to go ahead and hit it. Okay, now we'll set it back down on top of our touch up right here. 
here at the top. I've got a little hole that's uh, drilled into the uh, body of the doomsday machine there, so um, it can just sit there. And if I want to take it off and don't and, and not see it, I can take it off. I'm gonna fold these strike ones down just a little bit. The angle's not quite right. There we go. <laughs> it looks pretty cool, guys. In person, it looks really cool. Let me see if I can um, bring you down here. Apologize for the bumpy ride. I'll probably fiddle around with the... Um, these need to be angled down just slightly a little bit more, but you get the general idea. It's pretty cool. It, it adds a nice little... something extra to it. So there you go, guys. A little fun with that. Um... And as I said, I'll be coming back and uh, doing the uh, decal on the front of the um, opening, you know, of the, of the mouth of the Doomsday Machine. And I'll get this rod painted black and get it all wrapped up. And then eventually, uh, a little while down the road, I'm going to work on the rest of the diorama and get, the, um, uh, get it mounted on the base and get the constellation built. I've already done some preliminary work on that. I can, I've got the kit sitting here. I can show you what I've done so far on that. I've started to uh, work on the um, saucer. I went back and looked at the uh, I'll switch cameras on me. Okay. Um, I went back and looked at the original episode. And uh, to see where the, you know, the, where the damage was, like those bites were taken out of the cookie, so to speak, <laughs> on the original. I want to try to build this to look like the original, you know, not the way it looked in the remastered version, but the original classic episode where they used the little AMT model kit. Uh, so we'll be doing that, and I've got some flickering LEDs in here that once I get it all built, I'm going to have it like there's, you know, some simulated glowing effects, fire or whatever inside the openings. And I'm going to take some little pieces of styrene and put in there to simulate decking and all that collapsed and, you know, beat up the nacelles and everything and do all the burn marks on it. So it should be pretty neat. It should be a pretty neat little display when it's all done. And I'll show you how that comes out a little bit later. So uh, that's it, guys. That's, um, that's everything for tonight. Uh, a lot of fun working on this kit and hopefully... If uh, some of you guys out there want one of these, you can, you know, you can find them and, uh, or, you know, I imagine whoever made them, the molds have probably still got to be out there somewhere. Um, it'd be nice if it was a little bit bigger, but, you know, to get one in scale with the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, like a 1650 Enterprise or something like that, I mean, it would be, even, a, even the 1 1000 scale model of the Enterprise, it would be absolutely huge. It'd be the size of your room. <laughs> so... It's just a neat little model, and it's uh, it's really accurate and everything. So, pretty neat little display, especially if you're a fan of the fan of the uh, classic series stuff. Okay, guys, uh, that's going to be uh, all for everything on the bench tonight. We're going to head over now and um, go over to the question and answer session and uh, do our shoutouts for tonight and see who all's who all's here with us tonight. So, let me go over there. Uh, Let's see. We'll go up to the top. We have Gardi with us tonight. We have Omar. We have Phil with the Sprue Works. Mike Kovach. Uh, George Vilkowski. Omar. Dan Harris. Uh, James Frost is with us tonight. E-Biker56. Uh, e Kenny with uh, Sci-Fi Andesy is here tonight. Nice to see you, Kenny. T Commando, Leona Timber Company, Federation Shipyard, Shannon Freeman, Barry Steinledge, George Volkowski, Fubara Model Yard, 
Uh, Phil Spruworks, Mike Kovach, Brian Knowles, Red Shirt Forever, PJC 2.0, Leona Timber Company, Outsider 238, Modeler X, Pierre Fontaine, Eric 13, Dad Nader 24, Todd Davies, Space Dock Modeling, Jason Matthews, Matt Alcar, NASCAR and NB Broncos fans. And NASCAR and Broncos fans, I always have a hard time reading that one. Uh, Eric Hawkins, nice to see you, Eric. Clint Llewellyn. John Petri looks like he's got to check out for tonight. My, I'm, looks like I'm running a pretty, pretty good delay here on my uh, broadcast tonight. I'm looking at the screen and it's quite a ways behind me here, but hopefully this is all working all right. Thomas Johnson. Matthew Hall. Jimbo2371, Ken Zimmerman, Brian Alloway, The Captain, Ted, Ted Pelsini, I hope I'm saying that right. Just realize it's going to be difficult to uh, do the the uh, t or question and answer session because uh, uh, I'm so far ahead of you guys on here. <laughs> I'm still seeing me working on the uh, working on the model there. Roger Ball, T.J. Blackwell, Lawrence 35. Eric Eric Dory or Dor. Gerald Jameson. just kind of pause here and watch along everybody uh, <laughs> it should catch up here in just a second I'm still uh, working on the little enterprise there putting the painting the phaser beams I'll have to go back and check and sure that make sure that the settings didn't get changed I, I, I usually don't have it's usually set for only like a 30 second delay but it's more like a 
few minute delay now. Unless YouTube changed something in their settings again, that wouldn't surprise me. Oh, I guess you guys are hearing me. Uh, you're caught up with me here, so uh, you're responding to some of the things. We have Rocket Boy, Todd Davies. So, okay, if you guys are hearing me and you're caught up with me, uh, maybe it's just my... Uh, maybe I'm just delayed on that end of it. Okay, well, that's good. So, yeah, if anybody has any questions out there about anything we showed tonight or that you want to ask any of the other modelers that are here, now's the time to fire them up, guys. Okay, yeah. Okay, I just figured out what it was. I had my... Uh, I had my slider on my uh, on the on the video itself. Uh, somehow it got moved back a little bit. So yeah, everything is copacetic. Hopefully, just one of those weird nights. We started off with a thunderstorm, and uh, I'm just glad it didn't uh, cut power while we were. I was just about ready to start broadcasting too, and the power flickered. And then it went out, and then I came on here and was talking to you guys. And right in the middle of that, then the uh, the internet connection went out. <laughs> so I thought we were in trouble, but we got it back just in time. Uh, okay, some questions coming in. Jason Matthews is asking, update on the 350 Reliant. No update yet, Jason. The model is still over at uh, Elliot Browns, who's working on the uh, photo etch parts for it. I'm kind of anxious to get that back here, too, and start working on it. Uh, I've gotten some pictures of the parts that Elliot's making for it that he's emailed me, and, and everything looks great. So hopefully when we get everything squared away, Everybody out there that has that kit, you'll be able to get the same parts and uh, be able to add those extra details on your model and make them really, really nice. Yes, uh, Martini McFly, I'll be definitely putting pictures of the Doomsday Machine up. Uh, and I'm going to make another video on my channel showing it all finished up. Um, and I'm going to uh, try to make the decals here myself. If I can't make them, I'm going to ask my friend Jerry to make them for me so I can get that front part looking the way I want it to. Right now you're just seeing the basic lighting in there. My idea is to have that actual it's a very it's a very strange pattern that they had in there. It's like a bunch of spokes you know in different colors and I'm thinking that if we can do a transparent decal and then uh, like I said maybe if I even have to double them up um, so that the light doesn't totally wash them out you know what I mean? And just put those over the top and then I can just uh, blend everything in around the edges with some airbrushing that should look pretty good um, Gerald or Gerald Jameson yeah sure you could use the man from Uncle Carr for the group build that's that's fine they're kind of like semi semi law enforcement kind of guys um, Jimbo 2371 do you have a list of spray brushes you use, or do, should I look? Uh, do you mean an airbrush? Ken Zimmerman's asking what the scale of the Doomsday Machine is. I don't have any idea. All I know is that it's really, really small. Uh, if I would have to guess, uh, you know, judging by the size of the Enterprise that comes with it, I would say it's like. One three thousand scale, maybe something like that. Thomas Johnson's asking about the three fifty hood. I haven't had a chance to get to it lately, Thomas. It's uh, it's basically right where I left off with it. Um, I I started getting some of the upper decking and superstructure done. I got the smokestacks put on. I got some photo etch parts put on it. Um, and um, I plan on getting back to it pretty soon. I don't have any plans to get the 200 scale kits. Uh, I just don't have any place to put them. They're just too big. Maybe maybe later if I ever get some more room, but I barely had a place to put the, the 350 Bismarck and now the uh, hood. I want to have it kind of sitting right next to it. But those, are, those 200 scale kits are awesome.
Yeah, you guys are giving some good ideas here for uh, what maybe to do with that decal. Yeah, there's a couple different ways I'm going to um, think about approaching that. I just mainly wanted to get some kind of lights in there now to give it that, you know, that twinkling effect. And I wanted to change color a little bit. So... Well, Feder, uh, Dennis at Federation Shipyard says uh, that he found the Doomsday Machine Kit at Federation Models. Maybe that's where I got it in the first place. I, I can't remember. It's been so long ago. I could have swore it was uh, JT Graphics, but maybe it is Federation Models. Uh, I bought it almost five years ago. Shannon, uh, Shannon is, Freeman's asking, how did I light the Galileo Bassards? That's the uh, Tenet Controls engine Bassard lighting kit for the 1-1000 scale Enterprise. They were perfect size for that shuttle. Lawrence 35 is asking about any plans for a USS Voyager. Actually, yes, uh, I have a client that's inquiring about one. I have the uh, I have the big Ravel kit uh, that has the detailed shuttle bay. So you may you may very well likely see a buildup of that here. It'll be a few months from now, um, but uh, you might see one of those. That's one that I haven't built yet. Yes, I do, Eric. I need a 1350 scale CV6 Enterprise, the original World War II version. I think Trumpeter's coming out with that kit. It's either 1350 scale or 1200 scale. Um, and they're coming out with a 1350 scale Hornet, too, I believe. No, uh, TJ, I haven't built an F-117. I saw your, you know, we showed your build a little earlier. Nice job on that. It's a beautiful airplane. I'd like to build an SR-71. I know that uh, Testers makes that large-scale version of that plane. Oh, the captain says, tomorrow's Chris Cortell's birthday. Well, happy early birthday, Chris. Here's to many, many more, buddy. As you guys know, Chris has uh, been ill. He's fighting cancer. So I hope everybody uh, is wishing him well and uh, thinking about him. He's a big, big part of our modeling community here. Uh, he's one of my favorite people. Um, super nice guy. Uh, he operates, in my opinion, one of the best YouTube channels out there just from the fact that he's, he, he approaches it strictly from you know trying to help people. And he's very nice about sharing all of his building tricks and tips. And, and he shows you how to do it really affordable, too, which is a really nice thing. So... Uh, as I said, Chris has been ill, and he's fighting cancer, and uh, he's hanging in there. So uh, if you haven't, you know, wished him well, stop by on his uh, YouTube channel or over his Facebook page and and uh, let him know that you're thinking about him. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, Oh, Shannon, you're building the uh, the AMT kit. Yeah, I don't think those, I don't think those that one one thousand scale will lighting kit will fit that. You'll have to look around and see what'll fit. Uh, I don't know if anybody makes a lighting uh, Bassard lighting set for the small smaller Enterprise kits that are out there. Uh, otherwise, you could just put a couple of blinking. 
LEDs in there or a couple of blinking SMDs that, you know, change colors or something like that. That'd be a pretty nice looking effect. PJC 2.0 is Duplicolor brand paint okay for model? It, yeah, it, it, it's, it should be. Uh, that's pretty good quality stuff. I use their primer and I use their sealer coat, the, the matte clear finish that they put out. NASCAR and Broncos fans was wondering if I saw his post on the Google profile taking these polar lights through. I have not seen that yet. I'll look for it though. And someone's asking about our eight foot enterprise. We're still working on it. Don't give up on it, guys. I'm not giving up on it. We're, we're actually making some progress. Uh, I can't say a whole lot about it, but one of the big hurdles that we had to overcome was finding somebody that could uh, do some machine work um, on creating a master mold. And one of the first things we wanted to work on was to see if they could do the saucer because it was going to be so large. And uh, we're waiting to hear back from them if they can handle it or not. It's a company that I, I can't, I don't want to say where they are because uh, we've got competition out there and uh, people that, there's some people out there who don't want to see us finish this thing as well. So um, we're going to keep things pretty mum. But all I can tell you guys is that uh, we are working on it. And um, when, it, when it finally does hit and we're making some really good progress, we're going to have a lot of really cool stuff to show you guys. So don't give up on it. It's just taking a whole lot longer than what we thought for reasons that we've already talked about in the past. You know, we, we had originally there was a kit available of it, and that got that got taken away, and then, you know, some other things happened. And uh, But we're plugging away at it. Myself and the other people involved, we have a meeting about it every week on Thursday nights and talk about where we are and what we're working on, and we'll get there. Eric Dury is asking, is there any sort of very small plug that would enable me to light up two different weapons and swap them? This would be for a Gundam. Sure, there's these little connectors called JST connectors. You can look them up. A lot of guys in the RC car, um, people use them. They're super tiny little connectors that you can get either, you know, two pin, three pin, four pin, and you could mount your, you could mount one end of it on your, on your weapon and the other in the hand or something and uh, just be able to unplug one and put the other one on. And they would both light up. Yeah, there's some really <clears throat> small micro connectors out there. If you're just lighting it, you'd only need two pins, you know, a plus and a minus. Okay, Dan Harris says the Doomsday Machine Kit is an Anibis Productions kit from 1992. So it's been around a while. But then somebody later on said it's available over at Federation Models, for anybody that's looking. Listed under Miscellaneous Models. Well, I'm glad it's still available, because I knew people were going to be asking when I showed it again. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, you know the story on it all. It's, it's going to happen. We're just, we just, you know, it's just taking longer than what we thought, and it's, we're spending our own money on it, so it's, uh, it's slow going. You know, I'm, I'm not a rich guy, and neither is anybody else involved, and we, we have to look for people that can help us out, and, you know, we can't just, you know, sure you can go to a company and spend thirty or forty thousand dollars, and they'll make the molds for you right away, but we don't have that kind of money, so. We have to do it the old-fashioned way, but the results that we get are going to be as good as anything else that anybody's ever done. 
and um, we'll, we'll show what we can do in the end. And the wait is definitely going to be worth it. Some of the people have to check out. Paul DiTomaso, Di nice to have you on tonight, Paul. Hope you'll check in with us next time. We had, uh, well, we've got 101 people watching right now. Appreciate everybody being here with us on a Sunday night. Hope I don't seem down on my energy a little bit, guys, but it is just brutally hot out here. I mean, really bad. This is the time of the year that I really hate. About another month and a half of it, and it'll start to cool off. Rocket Boy asked which clear resin I used. I don't even know, uh, Mike. It was just some resin I had sitting here. Uh, it's automotive based, um, and you know it got a couple of tiny little bubbles in it, but it doesn't matter because it's all going to get covered up. Um, once it's lit and everything, you can't even tell. It actually makes it look better with some bubbles in it. It makes it kind of more twinkly looking. <laughs> um, but yeah, it took about three or four hours for it to dry. I tried it in a Dixie cup first to see if it would cure, you know, because I knew it was going to be kind of thick. It was going to be, well, I poured about probably a hot, half of a shot glass worth in it. And I didn't want it to pull, pour it all in there and then find out it wasn't going to cure. So I tried it first in a Dixie cup and, you know, put it about an inch deep. And it cured in about three or four hours, so that I went ahead and stood the model on end and just poured it in there and let it dry. Yeah, I, it took me a while to figure that out because I uh, I sat here for a couple hours trying to cut out a, a lens out of clear styrene, and I could never get it to fit just right because the, uh, you know, the shape of it in there is all rough and everything, and it's not perfectly round. It's kind of, you know how the front of the Doomsday Machine looks. It's weird. And um, I didn't want to have any gaps around the edges. So I thought, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, just something clicked in my head. And I was like, oh, wait, I could pour something in there and, you know, some clear material. And just since the LEDs are waterproof, I didn't worry about hurting them. And it, and it actually worked out pretty good. Roger Ball, uh, yeah, w well, when we originally uh, started off with the refit project, the eight-foot model, we did start a Kickstarter campaign, and I only got to run it about two weeks. It was supposed to run for, I think, two months, and people were donating, and we, you know, we got a little bit of money. We didn't get a whole lot of money, but we got some money, and, uh, but then right in the middle of it, the, the people that we were going to get the kit from, which was uh, Time Slip Models, they stopped making the kit. So we were dead in the water at that point, so I shut everything down. And um, we took that money that we had and we uh, put it into, you know, developing the model and getting uh, some pre-mold work done and everything. And the original person that was working on it for us, he turned out to be, uh, it didn't work out with him. And so we're on, we're on our third attempt now, but we're, we're dealing, we're, we're handling a lot of these things ourselves now. And we found a regular company that can do the CNC work, you know, the milling you got to mill it. You got to mill the uh, uh, master molds out of wood first, and we had to know that they had a machine that was capable of, you know, doing the fine detail like the grid lines and the the sensor bands and all that. And then later on, the uh, you know the the grid lines on the secondary hull and everything. So it's uh, they they sounded like they were confident that they could do it. So we're just waiting for them to. They're going to run a little test piece and they're going to get back to us and let us know. So if they can do it will be that is a major leap forward if we can get past that point that's a major leap forward because once we know we can make the molds then we're all set building it wiring it lighting it and painting it we already know we can do that it's just getting the molds and then of course we got to come up with a an armature uh you know a skeleton for the inside of it which i have a friend right here in san antonio that will um that will work on that because it's it's so, it's going to be so big you know just like they just like they did on the original studio model it had a skeleton on the inside of it you know to reinforce everything 
our model will be better than the original because our will, ours will have a shuttle bay, uh, and it'll be made as as a display model. You know, when you so you can walk all the way around it, top, bottom, sides, and and it'll it'll look beautiful. Where the original model was only made to be looked at from certain angles, you know, and it didn't even have a shuttle bay. They in the back where the shuttle bay is supposed to be, they had a mount for the armature, you know, to film it. We're just going to have one mount on the bottom, and we can do a lot of lighting on it now that they couldn't do then. They had to do it with trickery, you know, with cameras and stuff, uh, post-production. With the technology we have now, we can create a lot of the lighting that it had and everything with electronics. So, got a lot of good ideas, just got to bring them into reality. Good night, Omar. And Shannon. I'm about ready to sign off here too, guys. Um, I'm ready to go inside and cool off. It is really roasting hot out here still. It's, uh, well, it cooled down to 89 degrees after the storm came through, but it's still pretty hot. So if anybody has anything else, ask away. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up. So, yeah, keep in mind, everybody, we're going to be doing our group build. Let me see if I can pull up my calendar real quick, and I'll tell you exactly what... Uh, date that will be guys I'll post it on our page as well it will be uh, Friday the 25th of August at 1159 p.m. is when it will start it will end 1159 p.m. on Sunday the 27th so you got exactly 48 hours as usual um, uh, this one's not a contest or anything, guys. It's just for fun. But, you know, if you want to go through the motions and everything, that'd be fine. If you want to post a picture of your kit on the page before you start it, you know, hopefully, it, you know, we, we all start off with, with uh, kits that haven't been started yet. Just show a picture of your kit, you know, still in the box or whatever, and um, we'll go from there. I just ordered my kit. I'm doing the... Uh, the sheriff's car from the California Kid. It's a it's a Plymouth. It's the same kind of Plymouth that Christine was, only it was painted blue and white. Uh, I got to track down the uh, decals for the doors. It had like those big gold sheriff sheriff's badges on the doors, and then I got to find the old bubblegum machine type police light to put on the top of it. Now then I should be pretty good to go. I've got all the other parts I need. It's got it has a push bar on the front of it. I'm gonna have to make that out of scratch. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm planning on building. So I'm really looking forward to see what everybody picks for kits. And it should be a lot of fun. And don't worry about it. Like I said, guys, do not worry about it if you don't get it finished on time. Uh, all we look forward to seeing is that you could, you know, you post your progress as you go along and you eventually get it finished and show us how it turned out, you know, on the page. So that's all, we, that's all we're really looking for. It's fun if you can get it done in 48 hours, but I totally realize that it's not everybody's cup of tea. People are really busy, and it's usually busy for everybody during the summer months anyway. So, with that said, guys, we'll be back uh, a week from this next Sunday. So, we're, you know, we're bi-weekly now. So, we'll see you next a week from next Sunday night at our usual time, 7 o'clock. And uh, until then, happy modeling, everybody. Uh, you guys take care, and uh, we'll look forward to your updates on our page and don't forget to check out the facebook group too guys there's some other different stuff going on over there if you haven't joined feel free to join in and uh post your stuff over there as well we look forward to seeing it so with that good night everybody take care we'll see you next time